out. Uh, welcome, special welcome to our previous chairman, Bob Brooks, for being here this evening. Nice to see you, Bob. Yay, <laughs> so, just can't get enough. When you're back in town, we're happy you're here. So, uh, as always, could we please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance and then please remain standing uh, for the invocation to be delivered tonight by Pastor Dave Hadsel from the Bella Vista Wesleyan Church. Yeah, we pray. Heavenly Father, as we can have just confirmed our belief in this great nation that we stand for, we believe in, and we live, and some have died for. We're privileged to live here in northwest Arkansas, one of the more beautiful places in the entire world. And we thank you for that. But it wouldn't happen unless there was leadership within every one of the communities, <coughs> just such as this, that stand for what they really believe in is the best uh, for, for everyone. And we pray that you will guide and direct their decisions and you will drive, direct this city, protect it, keep us, watch over us for the big things, the little things, and all in between. We ask all of those things in Jesus' name. God bless America. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, I think we can turn it over to Tom. Cindy, if you can come on forward for the celebrating success. Hello. Good evening. My name is Cindy Bassett. I'm the director of HR for the Bella Vista POA. Uh, tonight we are honoring uh, Gil Rodriguez, Kelly Sigmund, I'm a little biased on this one because they are my team. Come on up. I didn't nominate them, but they were. <laughs> so they are my, this is the HR team here at the POA. So Kelly and Gil have dealt with some very unique situations this year. Besides dealing with numerous office moves, they've been a little all over the place from the hog box to closets to several locations. They've dealt with the, the temperature issues, the just disarray of everything in HR. Um, they've done it with uh, a smile on their face. They've been very, um, they've remained focused. Uh, people hear them talking to prospective and new employees. They exude a positive and passionate feeling about just working here. They welcome everybody with a smile. They do what's asked of them without complaint. It's probably one of the best teams I've ever had work for me, so I thank them a lot for their service. They have put up with a lot. So, um, and just a, a reminder, we've got almost 400 employees and they handle everything from benefits to HR to payroll to recruiting in a very tough market, and it's just two of them uh, under my leadership. They do a lot of the work, so I have to give them credit for that. So I thank them for their hard work and their dedication. Right. Approval of uh, minutes. So I hear a motion. June 18th, uh, June 8th work session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. The June 15th uh, regular meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Motion passes. All right. Financial report. Dwayne. Just a quick note here. Um, John has a proxy for Joshua Hart tonight. Okay, good. All right. Well, this is the financial report starting with the POA for six months running, ending June 30th, year to date. Looking at the revenue section first. This is revenue compared to budget variances. Past due collections have been up every month, and they're up again, 243 year to date. Legal accounts for 211 of that.
accounting is 32. Uh, investment income has been up 221. Market activities 203. Realized gains is 17. And donations received, we've talked about this before, the Skills Park donation from the Walton Family Foundation for 170, and the Fly Tires donations, 10. Uh, golf is down, as we've kind of speculated, because of floods. Uh, we're down 157 on golf fees year to date. Looking at the same revenue variances, but comparing these to the prior year, Past due collections again, legal 225, accounting 76. Uh, donations, the same number. Food and beverage, Lake Point is 100,000 of that. We didn't have Lake Point last year, so that's 165 positive on food and beverage. Golf and recreation makes up the balance of that number. Assessments are down by 206, but that's kind of a misnomer because a lot of the assessments from past year was up here in this uh, number, the past due collections. Looking at the expense section, again, this is the POA, six month running. Uh, employee benefits are better by 296. Again, uh, health insurance and payroll taxes. Payroll taxes for the vacancies that we're experiencing. Maintenance and repairs are better by 238. Savings just across divisions year to date. Uh, and salary and wages are better because of open positions and savings by 213,000. Comparison again, expenses with prior year, employee benefits are also better than prior year by 254 against the health insurance. Uh, maintenance repairs are better by 182, again, savings across. And salaries and wages are higher by 263, but we budgeted more labor in this year's budget. Looking at the EBITDA, stands for earnings before income taxes, depreciation, and allocation, it's better by 1,334,000. And here's the breakdown of that number. You can see the various entities that make up that number. And legal leads the way again for 290 better than budget year to date. And you can see the other numbers that make up that number. Going on down to simple cash flow, we're actually 1,794 against budgeted 273,000 against prior year 973,000. We're having a very good year. Looking at the water utility, same six months running. Starting with the revenue section, two revenues, investment income again, 85 better. Market was 78 of that number. And water capital buy-in fee, just due to all the increased building permit and all the activity in the village, 70,000 better. Looking at the variances against prior year, water capital buy-in fee again, 72 building permits and investment income down by 66. At this time and six months ago, we were better in the market. Looking at the expense section of the water, uh, employee benefits are better here also because of health insurance and vacancies, employee payroll taxes, 51,000 better. Salaries and wages are better by 42 vacant positions, and maintenance and repairs are better by 35 system repairs that were budgeted that have not been spent. Looking at the prior year comparison, employee benefits, again, health insurance, better by 36. Maintenance repairs, again, system repairs, better by 28. Looking at EBITDA is 263,000, and this is just one entity, so that's the number. Uh, and then the simple cash flow, we're actually 129,000 against the budgeted loss of 52,000 against prior year of 409. That concludes my report, pending any questions from the board. Thanks, Dwayne. All right, response to previous open forum uh, comments. Uh, last month, the board approved the funding to do the improvements to the Highlands Golf Course, uh, which necessitates closing that golf course for about eight weeks uh, and delaying the full opening of the restaurant there. So, Deb Sorensen uh, had some comments and, and discussed what we might be able to do in the interim during this inconvenience uh, with the clubhouse and uh, particular for people who want to play cards. So Tom had a meeting uh, out at the clubhouse with about 40? About 30. 30, 30 people. They reviewed the options. Um, uh, I guess they took a vote on it and, and seemed to come to a conclusion that's uh, satisfactory to the majority, if not everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, if, during this inconvenience. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, 
All right, open forum now. If anybody has anything they'd like to address to the board, just come to the microphone and uh, we'd be happy to hear you. Bob, you got no criticism of how we're doing things or something, anything like that? Or? <laughs> okay, good, good. All right, uh, Joint Advisory Committee reports. Lakes, uh, is Judy? No, Judy's doing uh, recreation. Judy is recreation. I'm doing lakes. You're doing lakes, okay, got it. Uh, lakes Committee met yesterday. Um, full, a full slate, they're now up to, uh, I think up to par on the number of members they're supposed to have. <clears throat> Elected officers, uh, new, uh, new chairman, or president, he's a chairman, isn't he? A new chairman is Matt Champagne. Kelly Austin is the vice chairman, and Lloyd Walker is the secretary. Um, got reports from staff. Uh, the most interesting report was from Rick Eccles. Uh, had a successful Canadian geese roundup. Uh, the Lake Rangers had 2,503 member contacts last month. Last month? Last month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they continue to be uh, working on their boat registration checks, and we're getting. It looks like we're getting most of the boats uh, up, up and uh, up and registered. We did have one changeover of a Lake Ranger. Um, general comment, uh, general manager's comments. Tom talked about the uh, paving job being done now out at uh, the beach for Lock, uh, for Lake Avalon. Uh, we did add cleats to the fishing dock at Loch Lomond, a request from a member. And there were some questions about uh, what's happening at Lake Point, and uh, then he also commented about the new uh, term. Under old business, uh, the uh, board referred back to the Lakes uh, Department to complain about wake boats. Uh, in addition to the regular membership, uh, Doug McCash was there. Uh, we reviewed the work that was done last year. Uh, talked about uh, the changes we made to the uh, the boaters pamphlet about standing off the uh, uh, standing off the uh, shoreline with your wake boat. Uh, Matt and Kelly are going to uh, do some more review of this subject, and we're going to it's uh, moved back to uh, the next meeting for uh, a recommendation to the board about what should be done. Uh, there was a discussion about capital projects and working on the uh, budget. I'm not going to put all those in here because when they get here, they get here. Uh, there was a long discussion about the beach and what hours it's open. Some surprises came up there. Uh, <laughs> and the next meeting is on August uh, 16th. All right, great. Now yes, Judy sir. is up for recreation. Any, uh, oh, sorry. I'm getting rumors that you're discussing uh, Buzzard pests in the village. The what? Buzzards. Buzzards that are starting to. Buzzards? Buzzards. Oh, buzzards. Vultures, buzzards. Uh, well, we didn't discuss it, so. Uh. <laughs> no, it was not. It wasn't discussed in the meeting. Not, not in the meeting. Okay. First, I heard about it. Okay. Anything else on lakes? All right, Judy. I'll keep everybody straight in which is committees. I don't. We, the Recreation Committee, uh, met uh, last week and uh, went through all of our amenities and reports. I'll give you the highlights of sometimes the recreation and lakes crossover, so I'll leave what John stole from me out. Um, so Branchwood, um, and I don't know, this may have changed after your meeting, Tom, but at the time we met, um, uh, reservations for card players would be taken at Branchwood for the Highlands Club, and so I'm assuming that still stands. That still stands, yes. Um, so there were no no card players in July, but obviously they understand now uh, what the yeah. process is. And we and we sent out uh, that was included mm -hmm. in one of the, our e blasts, <laughs> okay. the information. Um, uh, the gun range, the changes at the gun range is, are pretty much done. Um, there's some fence work in order to incorporate the restroom, um, accessibility. The upside, um, which coincides with the financial report, but it was the busiest month last month so far at the gun range, so that's good news. Um, there has been a new attendant hired uh, who will be working three days a week, primarily on the weekends to help assist um, it, with uh, 
consumers and the guests that come to um, shoot their guns. So um, when the attendant is not there, then the status quo will be um, that Branchwood is where you would check out the key to get into the area. So um, RV storage, like Ann, not too much. Um, same with Rudin Hall, although the pool, um, uh, we are going to go ahead and continue on with the, the evening swim time. So if you want to take a swim in the evenings, there's discounted pricing. <coughs> and I believe that is from 6.30 until the pool closes at 8. So it's only a dollar, which is a great deal. Um, Tanyard Creek and Lake Avalon, you already talked about the parking. Um, the main thing at Tanyard Creek is possibly recommending um, that an additional trash can be added to an area around the waterfalls as um, that's a high, high use area and um, that trash can maybe would help encourage people to actually throw their trash in it. Um, pretty much that's it for the amenities of uh, worth mentioning. Uh, new business, um, Tom did ask us as well to come up with some budget ideas for 2018. So the board will be reviewing and um, getting that. We'll be discussing that at our next meeting. Um, suggestions to our new president, who is our chairman of the board or the committee, is Gary Griffin um, by the 27th. So, um, and then Joan did her report for the Recreation Department, which is our, our biggest report we like. Um, the movie night at Metfield was successful, although it was raining, and they did get 150 people. Um, the Twilight Swim, again, is going to continue. Um, and then on October 28th, mark your calendars at Blowing Springs. Um, the POA will be hosting their first event called Fleas in the Park. Um, and this will be kind of a flea sale uh, vintage market that will also have uh, games and family fun events. So um, make sure you're ready to go to that. Um, unrelated really to the POA, but to the recreation in the area and, and Bella Vista is there will be a second uh, Bike Skills Park coming close to where the Cooper uh, Elementary School is. Um, and then also, Bella Vista has been named a tree city for the state of Arkansas. So uh, we will be in line to get some additional trees planted. And the focus is around the Blowing Springs area. So um, our next meeting is August 14th. And we will be, that will be a closed meeting for the committee to discuss uh, budget items for next year. Pat? Um, the, um Second Bike Skills Park. Excuse me. Uh, the Second Bike Skills Park, is that also going to be funded by the Walton Foundation? Yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It, it's on Cooper School property. Yeah, it's on Cooper School property um, adjacent. Okay, so it's not ours. Current workout. Okay. Facility. We're not taking care of it. We're not, it's just. School, school. Okay. When you're going to the Blowing Springs Park, that outdoor fitness equipment that you see on the right-hand side, it's going to be by those. Okay. Had I fulfilled my duty and gone to the Recreation Committee meeting, I would have known that. I was in Texas. Right. We'll forgive you this time. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on recreation? All right, golf. Bill, are you doing the golf report? <clears throat> golf committee met yesterday at five o'clock. Um, we started with golf course maintenance, uh, presented by key themes. Uh, progress on Highlands is on schedule. Collars have been cut. Most have been removed, and the sod is being laid. One third will be complete this week. Uh, the sod's not quite as bright green as it was last time, uh, due to the hot weather weather at the supplier. Uh, the sod is shipped overnight, and it is healthy, and will grow in fine. Cart path uh, repair bit has been approved. Repairs will be scheduled for the end of August um, at Highlands. New sod will also be laid on nine tees. Eight of them are red tees. One of them is a white tee. Uh, as far as flood repairs, Scottsdale number two is complete. Highlands number five is 95% complete. Country club number eight, hole number eight is not running properly due to the hot weather. 
and they're using a portable fan uh, to try to cool that down so it'll grow in better. Do we have an estimate of when that will open? He's estimating towards the latter portion of September. Uh, for, if you look from a distance, it looks pretty green and lush, but if you stand on top of the green, it's, it's very thin, and you get play on top of it, and we're going to lose it. Okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, seeding or sodding bent grass at the time that we did, just the beginning of the season, uh, summer, is just the worst timing of all. Okay. Okay. Small items like the Kingswood uh, cart pass will be done in the winter. They can do it during maintenance week, so it won't impact the play. Um, in, uh, on August 9th, Dr. Kamer from the USGA, he's an agronomist, will meet the group, golf committee group, at 10 a.m. at the Kingsdale Pro Shop. He will also be do a presentation at the golf committee meeting later, later that day at 5 o'clock. Under golf operations, uh, USGA and the team from the Arkansas, Oklahoma, uh, rated Scottsdale in the country club. The calculations will be complete next week. Uh, revenue recovered some in June, but it's still down for the year. That's mostly due to the flooding. Um, revenue programs, the Kids First program and the, and the Get Golf Ready programs. The Junior League has one more match so far this year. They've got two wins and three losses. And Daryl thinks that's excellent uh, performance for a brand new team. Uh, they're playing against a lot of teams that are a lot more experienced. Uh, Get Golf Ready, there's been a lot of really strong interest. Um, one thing they're looking at next year is uh, expanding that to the next level. So there would be a get golf ready and a, you know, then a stage two. And that would be combined with a golf outing to get people used to playing. Under, old, or under new business, uh, Philip Wright uh, presented a new process for group sign-up. Um, he covered the the golf group uh, proposed revision. A motion was made to accept the proposal and it was approved six to uh, zero. So it was unanimous. Uh, summary of the budget advisory process. Um, draft of the 2018 golf budget as requested by Mr. Judson um, was reviewed. Uh, we're still working on it. We're gonna schedule another week or another meeting in two weeks to um, after we get some input from the golf groups and other people that we've contacted. Um, we'll, and we also looked under new business at overseeding. Uh, Mr. Judson presented two estimates that came from uh, Keith Eames and Philip Wright. The first was for the cost uh, of maintenance to overseed and the second was a potential revenue increase. Um, looking at those figures, a motion was made to continue with the current process and not overseed. And the motion was uh, passed anonymous or unanimously. That's all. All right. A couple of things. One, first of all, Bill, congratulations on being named the chairman of the uh, of the golf committee. We appreciate all the work you've done and continue to do on that that uh, that committee. So. Thank you. We, we look forward to you to work in that uh, the next year. Ruth? Can I add that the board is not only invited, but they're highly encouraged to come to the August 9th meeting with the USGA representative to see some of the things that are going on and answer some of the questions. They really appreciate when the board comes because it gives them more information. Yeah, and if you haven't been, those <laughs> meetings are always really informative. 10 o'clock right. in the morning. Yeah. The, 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 those people represent uh, and visit golf courses all through basically the southern half of the United States and they're very knowledgeable. Any other comments or questions for Bill? Good. One other personal note, uh, Saturday I played in a uh, Golf Channel amateur event at Scottsdale. We had people here from um, Missouri, Oklahoma, and other places in Arkansas and held our little awards uh, ceremony on the deck there in the back of Scottsdale and all those people were just raving about the golf course and the whole facility and the view and everything and I have no doubt they'll go back to their part of the world and tell their friends about it so uh, it was nice to hear that. Thank Thanks you. Bill. Uh, young residents, I understand there was not a young residents meeting this month so no report. 
Um, old business, we have none. New business, uh, we uh, have had a, a, a vacancy on the board, a temporary one, until uh, next June. So we did as we have done in the past. We invited uh, and asked uh, for people to put forth their names. And those that were interested, uh, the, the board interviewed those candidates. And uh, at the end of that process, uh, selected David Welchel to uh, serve that interim position until next May uh, or June 1st. Uh, <clears throat> so we'd like to formally do that now. If I could hear a motion to uh, name David Welchel to the uh, temporary board position. <coughs> I move that we name Dave Wetchell to our position until June of 1st of next year. And I'll second that. It, All in favor? It, hold on. It's, it's to May 31st. May 31st. It's May 31st. May 31st. <coughs> June 1st. All in favor? Any opposed? Can't get out of it now, David. Would you like to come up here and, uh, and join us at the table? Yes. Please. <laughs> That USGA meeting, is it here? Yes, Kingswood. Some people don't have any likes for that. Kingswood restaurant? Yeah. What time? 10 a.m. Wednesday morning. Um, at this point, I think I'll turn yep. it over to Tom sure. for the rest of these. Uh, next up uh, on page 62 of your report, I will, uh, I've asked Cindy to come uh, <coughs> up and give you a, a six-month update on the employee benefit plan. If you recall, we made some adjustments to the plan last year for the budget year 2017. Good evening again. Uh, I'm going to just do a, a highlight over what I have presented to you. Last year I was charged when I came into the POA to look at all of the, the programs that we have and the benefit plan was, was a big part of that. So um, in looking at it, we sent it out to market. We got several uh, bids from some of the larger networks, some of the larger TPAs in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, we picked the top three most competitive bids from that and we once we chose it, network and a TPA to go with, that allowed us to then go in and redesign our benefit plans to offer some additional enhancements to our employees to make us more competitive in the market. It gave us opportunity to, I'm sorry, <laughs> redesign and offer some additional plans. So I think that's been uh, the biggest contributing factor to the overall savings. This year at the six month mark on uh, the benefit review. We're currently 296000 under budget on the benefit plan for 2017. We're 254000 under compared to last year. Uh, there is no way to measure where we're going to come in at the end of the year. It's hard to measure where claims will come in at the last part of the year. But if we stay on trend, it's going to be a tremendous savings with the plan designs that we've done. And the employees have had the opportunity to have some uh, savings on their per check premiums with some of those designs. So it's been a win-win for both sides. Any questions? Great. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks for the report. You're, you're very Appreciate it. Uh, next up uh, on uh, page. Yes, sir. Tom, uh, our, our packet includes uh, a section on the Valley Task Force, and we have not had any comments about that. Uh, could you uh, briefly go over what, uh, what has been happening with the Valley Task Force? How about we uh, we'll cover that at the very end? How okay. about that? Is that all right? Sure. Okay. Um, on page uh, 63 of your board packet, uh, we are uh, proposing uh, that we change the timing of the meeting schedule. Uh, what we're proposing is that all three of the meetings would be pushed back by one week. Uh, this is uh, because uh, we're trying to implement or would like to implement a new accounting procedure where we have preliminaries that come out. Uh, that way our department heads would be able to look at our preliminary financials. If there are any errors, those corrections could be made before the, finan the final financials would come out. This, this change has been really uh, precipitated because we are now full-fledged into the food and beverage business. And what ends up happening, uh, I'm not trying to belabor the point, but what ends up happening is if an error is made in our cost of sales at the restaurants, if the correction takes place in the following month, it really, it, it, it skews the numbers 
for, for one month and the following month when the correction was made. So for example, and I'm not picking on anybody, but we had one course that there was a, um, an error made in their bar purchases, and so we had abnormally low cost of sales in one month, the correction was put through, and then we had abnormally high cost of sales in the following month. And so it really skews those numbers, um, and, and, and we're tracking so many costs of sales. We're tracking four to five costs of sales for every single outlet to ensure that we're tracking and controlling our expenses. And so by implementing this procedure, it'll allow us to catch those mistakes. Um, I've been in the industry a long time. This is the first place that I've ever worked at that did not have preliminary financial statements. So uh, we think that we'll, it'll provide the board with better quality financials. What this would require, though, is a change in policy 1.07, which we have provided for you on page 65. And originally, uh, the policy st stipulated that the meetings would have to take place on the third Thursday. Um, but so what we're proposing is uh, we change the language where it would say at least once a month on the day and time to be set by the board in order to address general business and take action as necessary. This will allow us, so w allow us to have the board meeting on the regular board meeting on the fourth Thursday of the month. Now the only exception we'd make would be uh, for the months of, months of Thanksgiving and for Christmas. We would put those probably on the third Thursday. This would, uh, if the board approves this, this would be the first reading of policy 1.07. So there's no vote on this one. Yes, there is a vote on this one, but we have to take two votes. Two. One this month, and then at the regular meeting next month, we would take a second vote, and then it would go into effect. All right, I hear a motion on this. Um, question. Um, you mentioned that there would be an exception <coughs> to Thanksgiving and for Christmas. Um, because the current, um, uh, I guess it's a bylaw, um, specifies that it be on a Thursday, and we're scratching that, could those meetings on, on uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving be held the day before, so that that would give you additional time to, yeah. to, to come up with preliminaries? Yeah, so, so this is a change to the policy, and, and <coughs> we have not stipulated a day or a time uh, only that it's in the month. And if you look at the, um, the bylaws, which is the higher governing documents, it really only stipulates when you need to have the annual meeting. That's very, yeah, that is set in stone. It gives you flexibility when it comes to the <coughs> regular meetings. But earlier you had said we would have those on the third Thursday of the month. And rather than you know, even insinuate that, it, it would be, I think that we just, I'm sorry, instead of even su suggesting that, we, in order for you to have as much time as possible to do the preliminary financials, uh, it might be spooched to another day of the week. And, 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 that, and that's totally fine. And, and that's why Doug wrote the policy change in that way, to give us that flexibility, okay. where if it's not a Thursday, we could do it on another day. Right. Thank but you. We, ha we just simply have to have a meeting in that month, but, and, right. and we would announce those those dates where um, we're holding the meeting on an odd day, you know, uh, right. we would announce it far enough in advance. We'd yes. put it out on the website. We'd put it in an e-newsletter e so that we uh, this we would know everybody would know when it's going to be held. Right. Any other discussion on that, Patrick? I move that we. Uh, are you going to go ahead? Go ahead. No, I, You're going to state the motion. I was just going to say uh, I would entertain a motion to accept on first reading policy 1.07 as presented to the board. So move. Second. Any, any further other, discussion? Any other discussion? I mean, the only comment I would make, we've discussed this a couple of times. Uh, we do an awful lot of financial reporting. We're, we're very transparent to, to our community and what we do. Uh, probably more industry standard would be quarterly detailed financial reporting. We're going to continue to do that every month. Uh, this is what Tom wants to be able to do to move it back for a week. So through this discussion, this is uh, uh, what we will do moving forward uh, as long as it's possible. It doesn't become too unwieldy or, or cost us too much in terms of people and time, et cetera. So other comments? And it will be as written. 
correct, as, as, as uh, stated here. As stated. General business, take action. Right. All right. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. On page uh, 67 of your board packet, uh, we have a proposal uh, to make a couple changes uh, to some of, the, some of the projects that uh, we're working on or soon to be working on. Uh, the first is on the Metfield restroom. Uh, that restroom is in pretty poor shape. It's, it's old and tired. Uh, the renovation to that restroom uh, would make it ADA compliant and all weather. Uh, right now, a lot of our outdoor uh, restrooms, uh, we have to close during the winter time, uh, drain the lines, and then we put a porta potty in front of a nice building. Uh, so uh, this would allow us to have those restrooms open year round. Uh, this restroom would uh, cost $64,000, and this is the one that is located close to the skills park up at Metfield Park. Uh, the second one is uh, the upper restroom at Blowing Springs, another fairly old and tired restroom. Uh, these modifications would make it all weather, uh, ADA compliant, and add shower facilities, uh, which is one of the key things that we're adding at the end is because um, we're getting a lot of usage on the primitive camping. We're getting a lot of people that are coming through, and this will uh, allow them to uh, allow us to provide showers for those customers. Uh, this would re re require us rearranging some funds to make this happen. Um, and then the last one is the enlargement of the uh, RV Park entrance building. Uh, that building is fairly small. Uh, this would expand it uh, or enlarge it. Uh, it would add a restroom for employee use. Right now they have to walk down uh, to the main restrooms, which is a little bit of a hike. Um, it would improve the interior, plus it would allow us to offer some simple convenience items uh, like liters of sodas, large bags of chips, bug spray, other things, and even those uh, new Inu Hanamix that are very popular with campers and so forth. Those are the ones that you can tie to a tree and you can have a hammock. Uh, and uh, we're actually, John gave me a picture of uh, some hammock um, uh, locations that they're building on the Razorback and we're actually gonna look at adding some of those uh, in the camping area. So I appreciate that input. Uh, uh, none of this would, uh, this would still, all these three changes would keep us within our budget constraints. Any questions? Should we do a motion for each individually and then to have discussion? Yeah. Okay. There's, there's a suggested motion on 68, so. Okay. So let's start with the first one with the Metfield Park restroom. Hear a motion on that. I make a motion that we improve the Mes Metfield Park's uh, restroom capital project for $64,000. The funds to come, uh, the funds coming from allocations of funds set aside for ADA projects. And I'll second that. Any discussion? That stays the same size, is that correct? The same site where it is same right now. Same size. Oh, the same size? Or very close to it. Probably very close to it. Bigger. Very close to it. I, 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 I can't answer. We're, we're not enlarging that. I, I, I think it's on the same footprint, but I'm not positive on that. Well, I think few things have the potential to make an impression, either positive or negative, like the bathrooms. So I would be in favor of that. So all in favor? I any, not any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Okay, a motion uh, for the upper restroom at Blowing Springs project. I'll make that motion uh, to add 49,000 to the upper restroom at Blowing Springs project and 20,000 to the RV park entrance building renovation project with the funds for both projects coming from the 200,000 approved for ADA work in 2017. We hear a second? Second. Any discussion on that one? Nope. All in favor? Any opposed? Josh, uh, Josh abstained on both of those motions. Okay. Oh, okay. But that's fine, but it's regardless, fine. it passes. It's yes. still, the motion still passes. Okay. All right. On page 69 of your board packet, uh, we are asking for a uh, waiver 
on the policy which requires us to get uh, three bids. Um, uh, this is for the cart pass at Highlands, which we're going to be doing while the golf course is closed for renovation. Uh, we have struggled. Uh, I mean, all you have to do is go into north, go around Northwest Arkansas. You can see the amount of construction that's going on, and we really struggled to get a company to come out and give us a bid. This is the same Hutchins Construction is the same company that did the work at uh, Scottsdale. Uh, one of the challenges in getting a bid for this type of work is because um, asphalt companies like to do everything in one stretch, where this is actually fixing a, a damaged area, picking up, moving, going to another damaged area, picking up, moving, and so that is not very appealing to some uh, asphalt vendors. Um, so we've had good work and good success with them, and uh, this would uh, the bid that we received from them is under uh, the budget that we had set aside for this project. I make a motion that we grant the waiver for the three bid requirement for the cart pass work at Highlands, recognizing the selected company was the low bidder of the three and submitted a bid for Scottsdale cart path work. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Uh, on page, yeah, whether Josh, yeah, on that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Skip that page. All right. On page seventy, we have another uh, waiver request. Um, this is on the uh, uh, flood damage repair uh, that was uh, done. Uh, this was uh, performed on uh, work on the number two T, number eight green, and the bunkers at two, three, four, and eight. These were all flood damaged. We were able to get two bids, uh, and we were recommending the low bidder, and this is the same company uh, that has done work for us uh, before, and we've been very pleased with the work they've done. We contacted three additional companies, and all three of those declined to bid. Uh, so uh, we were only able to get two bids, so we were asking for a waiver on the three bid requirement. I make a motion to authorize the waiver of the three bid. Second. Any discussion? The one thing I would suggest, Tom, is that we uh, put out something about number eight green, because as you play the course, you can tell it looks really great, and we, you know, you walk by and say, well, I wonder why we're not playing yet. So uh, maybe on the our golf uh, email announcement and in general, so people will understand that we just uh, we know it looks great, but we want to make sure that it it's just awful hot weather for that kind of grass. I agree completely. And like I said earlier, if you look from an angle, it looks pretty good, but when you stand on top, it's thin. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Patrick? Um, just curious about uh, source of funding. I really like the idea that, excuse me again. Um, I really like the, the um, identification of the source of funding for the projects at Metfield and for the RV Park in Blowing Springs. Um, these last two uh, are the variances. We did not address the source of the funding. So for the cart path, uh, I, I thought I had indicated in there, um, uh, for the cart path, that was a budgeted item. Uh, okay. and, uh, the budget, and the bid came in under budget. For the damage repair, it was not a budgeted item. It is an expense because it's a repair. Uh, so it will negatively impact the financials um, uh, when we pay the bills. Okay. Thank you. Good. Other discussion? All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes. We appreciate it. Um, just to give you an uh, uh, update on where we're at on the Valley Task Force. So we have, uh, uh, the task force has met with uh, three uh, engineering companies that specialize uh, in hydrology. We've received three bids. Um, on top of that, we've met with the city of uh, Bella Vista. They are interested in potentially partnering us with us um, on this bid, 
uh, on this process, uh, which would be beneficial both to the city and to the POA. It would save uh, the POA some funds. And what we've talked about briefly is that um, where our interests overlap, we would split it. And when our interests are individualized, we would pay for it on our own. Uh, for example, we're asking for, you, for the company, the hydrology company, to not only do the, uh, do the survey, but also to interpret that for us. Well, the interpretation would be individualized where the survey would be shared. Uh, and the city wants more than just the three golf courses uh, done. They want uh, quite a bit more than that. So they would cover the additional amount on that side. Um, and so what I've done is I've had to rewrite uh, or write up uh, a scope of work uh, based upon making sure that we accommodate what the city's needs are and what the POA's needs are. So uh, the Valley Task Force is meeting tomorrow and hopefully we'll be able to finalize the scope of work uh, and we'll have to re-go back to the engineering companies that already submitted a bid because the scope of work has changed uh, just a little bit. Uh, additionally, um, last week we had a meeting with the uh, Corps of Engineers. Um, it was fairly insightful. Um, uh, the meeting uh, was with the uh, Corps, with the city, and Cooper uh, Communities was also there. So we, we've, uh, we're getting more information about the type of work they're doing. Unfortunately, it does not appear that we're going to be able to uh, tap into some of the funds for the, for, through the Corps. And the, one of the main reasons is, is simply because their time frame is a three to five year window. Uh, and I don't think we can last that long uh, before we repair the golf course or do whatever we're going to do in the valley. So the uh, task that force sufficient? seems to be moving forward thoroughly and effectively. And, um, uh, and uh, we just ask uh, people's patience as we work through this process. I, I have some questions, but they're not necessarily appropriate for this meeting. If we could have a more extensive briefing at one of the early board meetings next month. We'll we, should, we should know quite a bit more by the first part of August. Okay. Uh, one would hope. Um, so absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any other additional thoughts, comments, questions? It was, it was stained on two votes. That was for the restrooms. Thank you. And he voted in favor of all the others, I voted right? For everything okay. Else. All right. If not, uh, announcements. Uh, the next three board meetings will take place in this room as usual. The first one, the COO board meeting, will be on Thursday, August 3rd at 2 30 p.m. This is a closed discussion meeting. The board of directors work session then will be on Thursday, August the 10th at 8 a.m. And that is open to the public. And then uh, this uh, Evening meeting, Thursday, August 17th at 6.30 p.m., uh, open to the public as always. Thanks for coming out. We're adjourned.